sound and echo. As mentioned in part one, heart failure divided in two categories, systolic and diastolic. In systolic, we have a pumping problem, and in diastolic, feeling problem. In other words, in diastolic dysfunction, left ventricular becomes stiffer and blood go hardly to the left ventricular. In that case, with progressing diastolic dysfunction, finally left atrium pressure increased. Increasing left atrium pressure transports to the pulmonary venous that at capillary level in lung, it causes high hydrostatic pressure and result of that is interstitial edema and alveolar edema that is the, uh, the reason for symptom sign of shortness of breath in diastolic dysfunction. The normal mean left atrial pressure or feeling pressure is about 8 to 10 millimercury. In diastolic dysfunction, it goes higher than this. Changes in diastolic dysfunction follow a specific pattern in Doppler. As you see here in this chart, at the left column is normal, and the other three are different degree of the osteoid dysfunction. In early stage of the osteoid dysfunction, the relaxation of left ventricular decreased. So it relaxed a little with delay that we will see here with. Uh, become increasing IVRT or isovolumetric relaxation time and the blood flow to the left ventricular slow so the E drop and it takes more time to fill completely so E become wider or in other words deceleration time increased and with uh, actual contraction sees at early diastolic dysfunction as you see here all the blood didn't go to the left ventricular some blood remain at the end of the early diastolic so at atrial contraction blood go faster to the left ventricular and cause a taller than usual even thought in this phase of atrial contraction, pressure in atrial goes higher than normal, but generally mean left atrial pressure, mean left atrial pressure stay in the, in the normal uh, range and doesn't increase. That's the reason with uh, this uh, stage of the diastolic dysfunction, we called it impaired relaxation and left atrial pressure will be normal. With progressing diastolic dysfunction, not only relaxation has problem, expansion of the left ventricular has problem too and become harder. In other words, left ventricle becomes stiffer. So with that change, little by little, blood retention in the left atrium and pre, uh, for pushing the blood goes to the left ventricular, pressure increased. With this increasing pressure in the left atrium, E start goes again higher because pressure goes higher when diastolic start, blood goes faster. So start again, E goes higher and becomes shorter and deceleration decrease. And in one when established diastolic dysfunction, the RVRT and deceleration time goes to the normal range and E become taller, but compared to the normal, the same, if we evaluate the same patient, E become taller than normal. Here we have cut off for 50 centimeter per second, so E become uh, taller than 50 centimeter per second. In that case, left atrial pressure goes higher than normal, and we will call it abnormal and this is stage two or pseudo normal. With progressing diastolic dysfunction, the left atrial pressure goes higher, and so the uh, result is taller E and sh narrower E wave. So the session decreased and E velocity increased. 
in one point e velocity become uh, two times the a or even more. The same pattern changes happen to the pulmonary vein uh, Doppler. In the early diastolic dysfunction, early stage in impaired relaxation, since the blood flow at the E early diastolic decreased, so the blood flow from pulmonary vein to the left atrium decreased too. That is correspond with the D wave. We will see D become shorter. With increasing uh, right atrial pressure and worsening diastole dysfunction, at this when pressure goes high in left atrium with starting uh, diastole, early diastole, blood rush very fast to the left ventricular. So the blood pressure at the E point drop suddenly, and this drop suddenly pressure in left atrium, blood from pulmonary vein to the left atrium increased, and you will see again D increase even more than normal and become higher than S wave. And we continue uh, worsening systolic function. Uh, in one point, D become very higher than S wave. The same, uh, and AR wave is represent A atrial contraction. So we will see the same when A increased, AR increased to little by little, become taller. On tissue Doppler, at the beginning, E at the early stage, E prime affect a lot and decrease uh, more than A prime. So e, to e prime to A prime become reversed. With progressing Dystolic function, diastolic dysfunction, E prime and A prime become less or reverse, and both of them decrease velocity. Their velocity decreases as you see here. Now let's see the new guideline. Based on the new guideline on diastolic dysfunction evaluation, we can divide the patient in three groups. First, those patients that have serious pathology, including moderate to severe valvular disease like MR or MAC, mitral annulus calcification, serious arrhythmias like atrial fibrillation, tachycardia, bundle branch block, heart transplant, restricted cardiomyopathy, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, cardiac pulmonary hypertension, or other situation like the patient is under ventilation or is very critical, like this is the patient in septic shock. In, th in those cases, the evaluation of the diastolic function will be a little complex and we are not going to talk about this, this in this lecture. In other lecture, we go in detail. The other two group are those patients with normal left ventricular ejection fraction and low ejection fraction. The cutoff for normal ejection fraction in this category is EF equal or more than 50%, not 53 to 55%. In the patient with normal uh, EF, we go evaluate four parameters or variable. Average E to E prime, septal and lateral E, velo e prime velocity, TR velocity, and left atrial volume index. Average E to E prime is when we measure both medial and lateral E prime. If we use only medial E prime for this ratio, cutoff will be 13. If we use lateral E prime velocity cutoff will be 15. For septal E prime velocity uh, is cutoff is 7 and for lateral is 10. If any of these two meet this uh, criteria, we take it as positive parameter. For TR, we use cutoff 2.8 meter per second. The reason we use this uh, level because at this uh, velocity, pulmonary artery systolic pressure 
become upper limit normal and increasing over this uh, amount we will have pulmonary pressure high blood high pulmonary pressure now if among of these four parameters three of them is posi are positive patient has diastolic dysfunction if three of, three of them are negative only one positive patient has normal diastolic function if two of them positive and two negative it cannot be determine if the patient has diastolic dysfunction or not. We call it indeterminate and is inconclusive. When we f uh, found a uh, patient those has diastolic dysfunction, for grading, we go to the next step. In this step, that we can use it for the first group and those patients that have patients that have low ejection fraction. As we mentioned in the first part, almost all patients with low ejection fraction, they have some degree of diastolic dysfunction. That is the reason in di this diagram, we don't see any normal diastolic function at this evaluation. So this uh, mitral inflow, which uh, check it for two parameters, each A and E velocity. Based on that, if each A is equal or more than two, and the patient is not athletic and young, this patient has severe diastolic dysfunction or type three, and left atrial pressure is very high. If each A prime is less than 0.8, and E velocity is less than 50 centimeter per second, patient has diastolic dysfunction type 1. Means we have impaired relaxation, but left atrial pressure will be normal. In this group of patients, if the patient are symptomatic, they have, for example, uh, uh, shortness of breath during activity or any other symptom related to the heart failure, we have to check it for coronary artery disease or we go for doing more study including diastolic stress test. Now, if the patient doesn't go to any of these two group, we go evaluated three other uh, parameters. If two of them are positive, patient has diastolic dysfunction type two or pseudonormal. If the two of these three uh, are negative, patient has diastolic dysfunction type one. If we don't have TR, that most patient, many patient, not most, many patient doesn't have TR, we check it the other two. If both of them are positive, patient has diastolic dysfunction type two. If both of them are negative, patient has the dysfunction type 1. If it's one of them positive or negative, then we go check the other parameters. The most important parameters in this case will be ratio S to D. If S is less than D, patient has high left atrial pressure and goes to category of grade 2. Now, let's put it in more practical way. As rule of thumb, all patients that has low ejection fraction or they have E prime less than A prime, always we have a kind of the diastolic dysfunction. Rule two, if E to, e to A e is taller than A, and E prime is taller than A prime, and E to E prime is less or equal 14, patient has normal diastolic function. If E to E prime is less than normal, and E prime less than A prime here, and E velocity is less than 50, we have grade one or impaired relaxation, and uh, left atrial pressure is normal. If E to A goes to the normal range, we have two options. First, we, go, we can go to do uh, Warsalva maneuver, 
in Valsalva maneuver during strain phase if E to A become reverse or E to A ratio decrease more than 50 percent this will be positive and patient will have pseudo normal diastolic dysfunction if we don't do that or it wasn't conclusive we go and check this other these three parameters if two of them is positive grade two if two of them are negative grade one if we don't have tr then we go again repeat those uh, two other factor two positive grade two one two negative grade one if it's one negative one positive again we go check it other parameter including s to d ratio and final rules is when e to a is more than two and e prime is less than seven centimeter patient has diastolic dysfunction type three and left atrial pressure is very high or in those patients that ha has other uh, character of finding of diastolic dysfunction we see s to d ratio if it's less than 40 percent or ar duration ar duration minus a duration here is more than 30 millisecond differences between ar and a duration we will have dust to dysfunction type 3. up to next time have a wonderful time